Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to start some final exercises to see if we learned what we're supposed to learn in this chapter. This chapter is kind of confusing, but once you get things straightened out, it seems fairly straightforward as to how to proceed through any of these problems. So let's assume that we have the following information. For the population, we're told that we have a mean of 100 and the standard deviation equals to 12. We take a sample with a sample size of 50, the mean of the sample is 96, and the level of significance is 0 0.01, which is fairly high. So here I've kind of drawn schematically what we're talking about. We have the large population with a mean of 100, and then we have a smaller sample with a mean of 96. So what can we infer about the population? So what we're going to do here is we're going to find the following things. We're going to find the null hypothesis, the alternate hypothesis, the confidence interval. We're going to find the level of significance. We're going to find the z-score at the half level of significance, the population mean, the sample mean, the population standard deviation, the sample standard deviation, the z-score for the sample, for the sample mean, which is the test statistic, and now we're going to determine whether or not we're going to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. So that's typically what we do with these types of problems. All right, so what is a good null hypothesis? Notice here that we have a two-tailed problem because we could either be larger than or smaller than the mean of the population. So the null hypothesis is that we're going to set the mean of the population equal to 100. So that is the null hypothesis. Now we're going to determine if we're going to reject that or not. If we don't reject it, then we agree that the sample indicates indeed that the population has a mean of 100. But if we disagree, we want to reject the null hypothesis, then we have the alternate hypothesis where the mean is not equal to 100. And then we accomplish that by rejecting the null hypothesis and, and then come to a conclusion that the mean is not 100 based upon the sample that we took. All right, the confidence interval. Well, if they give us a level of significance of 0 0.01, then we know that this is equal to 1 minus the level of significance. So in this case, that's 1 minus 0 0.01, which is 0 0.99. In other words, we're looking for a 99% level of confidence. This is the level of significance, which we're told is 0 .0, 0 0.01, which is 1%. And then if we take the z-score of that, so now what we want is we want the z-score of half of that, which is 0 0.005, or essentially we find the z-score of the 99.5%. Actually, on the table, we're looking for 49.5%. Uh, so what we're doing is we're looking for 0 0.5%. 495, that's 49.5% on one side and 49.5% on the other side to find the z-score. So 49.495, 495 on the table is right about here. So I'd say that's about 2.575, roughly speaking. So um, we'll go over here. So that's equal to 2.575. All right, this is the mean of the population, the average population, which we're given to be 100, the mean of the sample, which is 96, the standard deviation of the population, which is 12, and the standard deviation of the sample, or by definition, that's equal to the standard deviation of population divided by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, that's 12 divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 50. And so again, we need a calculator for that. I don't need my table anymore. So 12 divided by the square root of 50, which is um, 1.697. 1.697. So that's the standard deviation of the sample. Now we're looking for the z-score for the sample. In other words, the test statistic, by definition, that is equal to, um, not mu, that's equal to uh, the mean of the sample minus the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation of the population, which is in itself divided by the square root of the sample size. 
So this is going to be equal to 96 minus 100 divided by the standard deviation of the population, which was given to us as 12. And then we can just multiply that times the square root of the sample size, which is 50. All right, so that's minus 4 divided by 12. So 4 divided by 12, and then multiply it times the square root of 50, and we get minus 2.357 minus 2.357. So now what we need to determine is we need to determine if the test statistic falls within the non-critical region or within the critical region. Now in this case, of course, we're on the lower end, so does it fall here or does it fall there? So what we need to do is we need to find out this limit right here, and we can do that by right here. Finding the z-score of the of half of the level of significance which we said was 2.575 so it would be minus 2.575 on the low end and plus 2.575 on the upper end so this is the z-score at the half level of significance and the z-score uh, at the half level of significance on the lower side and now where is our test statistic right here drum rolls minus 2.357 which would place it right about there so there's our test statistic t uh, which is equal to minus 2.357 notice that it's it falls in the non-critical region which means we will fail to reject the null hypothesis so we fail to reject the null hypothesis in other words, we accept the null hypothesis, which claims that the mean of the population is 100 based upon the confidence interval, the sample size, and the mean of the sample. We have determined that it supports the concept that the population average is equal to 100, even though it was quite a bit different. It looked like the sample size was big enough and the level of confidence was such that we are confident enough, 99% confident, that that still supports the concept that the mean of the population equals 100 based upon what we discovered with our sample. And that is how it's done.